Our News on Terror segment tonight. In Iran, people are gathering in the streets shouting death to America during massive rallies in Tehran celebrating the anniversary of the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Iranians burned U.S. and Israeli flags as the supreme leader of Iran called on people to show Iran is not afraid of American threats. So is this political posturing on the part of Iran or should Americans be concerned? Take a look. With me now from the Washington Free Beacon, Adam Credo. Adam, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, Adam, you can see this for yourself. I mean, these are not your everyday riots going on right now, burning U.S. flags, burning effigies of Donald Trump, shouting death to America. I mean, is, it, is this something the American people need to be concerned about, or is this political posturing? Well, look, I would say certainly not a scene we see in the United States very often, but in the streets of Tehran, when it's government-backed, uh, this happens quite often, especially on the celebration of the Islamic Revolution. Every year, they're burning American flags. Back when Obama was president, it was effigies of him. Back when George W. Bush was president, it was effigies of him. So a lot of this is political posturing by the Iranian government, and it's really meant to serve a domestic purpose. This is to bolster spirits at home and is for internal consumption rather than external consumption. I think that, honestly, a lot of people uh, in America would watch this and laugh at it because it's, it's on many levels ridiculous behavior and does not prove in any way that the Iranian nation is strong. No, and we, we talked about that last, last week, how uh, Iran laying the American flags uh, in front of the walkways after, P after passengers in Iranian airports got off the plane. They wanted the passengers to wipe their feet on the American flag. That really shows them more to be cowards. It shows them to be afraid because that's almost something that a bully would do. But fr from a different per perspective here, it almost seems like Iran is trying to push our buttons, trying to see exactly how far, how close to the line they can creep before America will go to war with them. Yeah, I think that's a really good point as well. Look, the Iranians are always pushing buttons, whether it be with these types of death to America, death to Israel parades, or whether they're buzzing U.S. ships in the Persian Gulf or even harassing our allies in the region. The Iranians are a country and a people that like to test the waters. They want to see just how far they can go. That's what this nuclear agreement really was about. The Iranians, uh, every time the U.S. thought we had a deal, the Iranians would say, well, you know what, we want a little bit more and a little bit more. Now, under the Obama administration, uh, that was given to them, right? The Obama administration really tried to accommodate the Iranians in the pursuit of peace in the region. The Trump administration, I don't think, is going to be as foolish uh, because I think they see the regime for what it is, and that's a tyrannical, extremist, thuggish regime. Right, and then, I mean, I, that's, I think that's why we saw the Trump administration put Iran on notice. That came directly from President Trump as well as from General from his. Flynn, his national security advisor. But there are reports, Adam, and clarify this if you could, that this is escalating uh, more so even than in recent years, in recent anniversaries. Because like you said, a lot of these riots do happen every year on the anniversary of the 1979 revolution. But uh, the Iranians are angry about the Muslim ban. They're angry about the sanctions. They're angry about Trump putting them, quote unquote, on notice here. Is this an escalation? I think in some ways, yes, it is an escalation, but I'd want to be careful about saying just what that really means and just how far they're going. Um, I don't think the Iranians, as kind of maniacal as that regime is, I think they're rational enough to understand that a war with the United States and our allies is not something they want. Uh, I know the Iranians posture and uh, make note of the time, uh, all the time of their mighty military and their military prowess, but if the weight of the U.S. military were brought down on Iran and the Iranian people, it would be a very one-sided fight. So I think more what the Iranians are trying to do here is offer one domestic rhetoric and two try to see just how far they can push the Trump administration without that going to that uh, breaking point. Uh, I think that's more of the reason we see a little bit of 
escalation. It's just kind of wiggling to see just how far they can get. Right, and I guess uh, we might be seeing that pretty soon. I mean, President Trump, maybe this is part of his threat to put Iran on notice, but there's been reports that he could possibly, that President Trump could sign an executive order that would uh, designate the IRGC as a terror group here. And I mean, that, that would be enormous in Iran. They're clearly very opposed to that. Oh, that would be a, a very, very major step. The Obama administration was very loath to do this, though there was somewhat of an appetite in Congress for it. Um, I think the Trump administration could make this a reality, maybe not designating the IRGC wholesale, but designating its terror forces, designating its businesses that are involved in illicit procurement, weapons work, things of this nature. And I would think that would send a real signal to the Iranians that the Trump administration is not messing around, I think it's important to remind everybody that the IRGC controls a major amount of the economy in Iran, so it's no small thing to sanction them, really. Right, and I, I guess, let me just put this bluntly, when it, when it comes to the IRGC, whether it's in whole or whether it's uh, partitioned into different segments here, are they a terror group? Um, in my personal opinion, yes, I think they are. They are directly responsible for the death of Americans. They are directly responsible for funding Hezbollah, Hamas, international terror groups. They're responsible for weapons shipments that have gone to Yemen that uh, are fighting against U.S. allied forces. Uh, they are responsible for weapons procurement in Iraq that has directly gone to the killing of U.S. soldiers. So I think in the most technical uh, version of terrorist organization, the IRGC certainly fits the bill. And I think the Trump administration and a lot of lawmakers agree. And I would think if you'd push them, a lot of people in the Treasury Department in that um, illicit financing network, I think they might agree as well. Right. And I guess that's what we're going to have to wait and see. I mean, it would complicate the U.S. fight against ISIS in Iraq a bit. Uh, but if American lives are at stake, I think it's the responsibility of the president to do so. Adam, thanks so much for coming on the show. It was great to talk to you.